I'm Kelly Gillespie from the casting office at Manhattan Theater Club. Uh, this lovely lady is Jennifer Mudge, um, and this lovely man is Kelly O'Coin, both of whom uh, have appeared on our stages at Manhattan Theater Club notably together in um, Of Good Stock a couple years ago, which was uh, a pretty fun uh, production that we did that hopefully many of you saw. Hey! Hey! Can we talk now about the fact that we've just had eight cocktails already? Is now the time to tell them that we've just... <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> uh, okay, well, if anyone's left, hi. Hi! <laughs> They're like, oh my God. Thank you for bearing with us. Hello, hello. Hey. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy, this is a very fitting beginning to a live thing happening in 2020, I think. So. Oh my gosh. Oh, Kelly already started drinking. Thanks. This is so 2020. No, okay, so full disclosure. I mean, I don't know if everyone heard what Kelly G was saying, um, or maybe heard three times. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jenny had a great cocktail, a very elaborate cocktail. I tried so hard to prep it and I just couldn't make it work. Um, so Carol and my wife is actually continuing to try because she didn't want to give up on it. And I just made myself a martini. Oh, that's, I mean, that's okay. I mean, it's classic. It'll be all right. Yeah. What's the drink? The drink is called the Fireside Move. Oh. And it's from, I mean, I don't know if like everyone else, anybody has been reading all the Bon Appetit um, recipes this whole uh, time, but not maybe making them hardly because they can, they're wonderful. It's just sometimes I have ambition and that ambition left like before this summer. And once we really settled in, I moved into like, you know, buying my own bread and, you know, just kind of, of, of I kind of floated down. So like the Thanksgiving one, I, I made like two appetizers from it because I was like, that's all I can really muster up lately <laughs> for baking. But this is a, a drink. So it's easy. But it's a, it's a lot of prep. And Kelly, did you try to do it? Oh, yeah. Did yeah. you make it work? I've, I've got a whole situation going on right here. Yeah. The situation yeah. is so good. Yes. So I'm going to make it along with Jenny, but I'm going to let Jenny lead the proceedings. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. So we, I mean, the thing that we did prep, right, was uh, tell me how to say this, this syrup. I don't or actually know. Orgiat is my guess. I don't know. Yeah, I did not know that um, syrup. It's usually an almond syrup, but mm -hmm. um, but for this, they made it into a pecan syrup, which I love because pecans are actually my favorite. That's why I think I was like, please, let's do this. Um, and it's from uh, Joseph Stinchcomb, the beverage director at St. Leo in Oxford, Mississippi. So thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Don't know you. Thanks, Joseph. To enjoy your cocktail. Hence the pecans. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, Pecans? Is that what they say in the South? I think pecans versus yeah. pecans. Pecans, I think right. probably, yeah, I'm doing that. Um, so I already made, I pre-made I, I pre mine, you pre-made <laughs> So it's, it's pecans and all spice berries and black pepper and uh, coriander, right? Okay. And sugar and sheer water. So it's That's a fancy, right. fancy simple syrup. It's actually, it sounds trickier than it is. It you does. Toast. That was really the tricky, you know. Yeah. You toast the things for five minutes and then you just put in the sugar and water, let it boil, and then let it cool. That's all. And then you strain it. Anyway. Okay. So. So now that we have our simple syrup, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to move into the actual, um, you know, shaking and making. Like, why not? I'm making a double batch. Hey. Smart. I'm going to do a single because I only have one egg sitting here. I guess I could go get another. Okay. Yeah, I know. I, I, I prepped with two. Oh, but I didn't. Let me get, I need to get my nuts. Okay. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to hold down the fort. Yeah. Don't, mind, don't worry about me. You want, to have to, you want to not? I give you not. I, I made you so many drinks in this kitchen. You know I, I know. I know. All right. Second egg. Good. All right. All right. Okay, so what are you doing for this, Jen? You're making one, right? I'm gonna make one, and then if I love it, I'll make another one. Amazing. Yeah, yeah that's a good so strategy. For, for one, it's one and a half ounce of Amaro, one junior shaker, one and a half ounces. Gonna... I have another piece of MTC Theater swag here. This is an India Pale Ale shot glass. 
Oh, no. Oh, Nate Miller. <laughs> That's right. All right. Here's my swag. <laughs> What do you have? What'd you do? Oh, your your bottle. What'd you do? What did Kelly do? <laughs> What'd you do? What do you got? All right. So now we've got our amaro in, and then we need three ounces of fresh lemon juice. I mean, normally I would squeeze, but right. well, again, yeah, it'll be all right. Early in the lockdown, you would have squeezed your own. Early in the lockdown, I would have squeezed my own. I think that that's true. You might, have, you might have actually harvested your own lemons. I would have harvested my own lemons off my lemon tree. <laughs> oh my God. You probably do have a lemon tree growing on your balcony with everything else on your balcony. You know, you know what? I did have some mint, but the mint had a situation last week, which was really sad. But we do have some microgreens outside because the cat likes to eat them. No. Yeah. So, uh, but we had tomatoes this year too. Oh, you did? Yeah, they were good. They came in until like October. Wow. Right? Which is epic. Your balcony is the envy of the entire New York theater community, Jen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. A lot of them have been on it. So. <laughs> I know. I feel like I've met, I, not, when we're back at the office, it's my first. Oh, yeah. My first uh, stuff. I mean, it's so close. It's so close. It's so close. All right, we've got our lemon juice and our amaro, and now we need our rye. So it just it just calls for one ounce of rye, but don't you feel like he needs a little more? Listen, I'm gonna do what that nice man in Mississippi says. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So one ounce. You're following the recipe. Yeah. Okay, okay. fancies. Okay. It's only respectful. All right, all right, all right. Kelly, I really hope that you managed to get one of these just airlifted to you any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I actually just did. Um, we weren't able to get it looking right, but um, I won't show it to you yet. We'll see yours first. Or do you want to see? The, do you want to see the the failed version first? Yeah. Yes. I don't think it's going to be failed, but it doesn't look bad. Oh my god, that looks beautiful. But it doesn't. It doesn't have that dark. It's supposed to be dark and then frothy. But did you do the egg white? No, we didn't do the egg white. That would would have been. Egg white makes the froth. But it's supposed to be much darker. But it, you know, it's going to be delicious. Be yeah, you're so ahead of us. All right, I just put my or 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 je, or je, oh, how much? Wait, how much? What or 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 geet. Or geet? Is that it? I don't know. Three so, quarters of an ounce or something like that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, twice as much, right? It's an ounce and a half. Yeah, three. Oh wait, three quarters. Three quarters of an ounce. Yeah, of the, so that's one. Yeah. Don't ever listen to me. Yeah, one is fine. Yeah, good. Okay. Three quarters of an ounce. Okay, now what? And now we shake. Do you have? Your rye, your um, amaro, your simple syrup, and your lemon juice. Now we shake. Yeah, yeah, with ice. With ice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> Here we go. And it says shake for like a minute. Good morning. Right. Yeah. So we should have been doing this part at the beginning. Why you did, Kelly? What's that? Oh yeah. Let me show you. I'm wearing the uh, the pants. Oh my God! You have your Fred pants on. The, the the hit of the show that Mudge and I did together. I don't know if everybody heard the introduction. No, Can probably not. Us? Let's repeat it while we're shaking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. Do the introduction. Maybe to go back. So Kelly O'Coin here, the gentleman with us, and Jenny Mudge, the lady with us. I'm Kelly Gillespie from Manhattan Theater Club. And uh, these two lovely actors uh, did a play with us called Of Good Stock, in which they played uh, husband and wife. So uh, that is one of the reasons that we have them here together right now, but also they're pals and we love them. They're friends of the company and uh, we just thought this would be fun. So there it is again. <laughs> Well, good thought, since we're already making drinks in our kitchen, we might as well Oh, yeah. Oh, God. All right. I think like that was a good shape. So now we, don't, we strain it. We're going to double strain it, is what he says to do. So what does that mean? Double um, do you have a strainer? I, well, I have the top of this, and then I also have a strainer. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, wait, you guys, this is an important thing. Christmas glass or this fancy up glass? Oh, the fancy oh, up glass. Fancy glass. Yeah. yeah. You got the it. Christmas glass is great, though. It's very cute. Okay. All right. Not yet. I'm waiting for them. Yeah. 
All right, so then we it's very full. return it to the shaker. Oh, okay, we're to the shaker. Where the egg white comes in. Ah. I have not cracked my eggs yet, so. Me either. Also, I can't get my shaker open. Hold on. I know, it's so hard to like, after the, I don't know what the science is of that. I'm sure it's going to be very fancy. All right. This is delicious. I don't know if it tastes anything like it's supposed to taste like, but it's Pretty delicious. Sure. Yeah. Oh, but I, but I swear, I'm really, really good. Um, I did see, um, sadly, that Pegu on the, um, you know, on a Houston has yeah. closed, and that's the first place I had um, a slow gin fizz, one of my favorite egg white drinks. Oh, now so permanent Pegu. Yeah. yeah. Permanently closed. They closed. Yeah. So sad. I know. Really so sad. I went by Undetois recently, and um, well, they're wow. up. But I, I know. I think that might have been for. I don't know. Worried about uh, rioting or something during the. Uh, I think that might have been the issue. But, but they haven't been open, have they? I don't think so at all. I don't think anything that just has only indoor seating, you know, that doesn't have a modicum. Right. Yeah. I'm doing all right with my egg whites. I mean, we'll see. I got my egg white, but I still can't open my cocktail shaker. <laughs> give it, uh, if you can, without knocking it over, give it like a whack on the side with, with this part of your hand. Like that? Yeah. See, he's an expert. He really is. I used to bartend. Chris yeah. Coffee would know how to do it. Chris Coffee, I know. I know. But how would we ever reach him? That's a good point. <laughs> For those of you out there listening, Chris is uh, Jenny's husband, so that's. <laughs> Jenny's always there, and, and a, a lovely um, actor, human, by the way, he is. Yes, he is. I'll get it. Yeah, you can't your glass. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to pause for this, you guys. <laughs> Wait, are, kids, are kids good for this? I got it. I got it. Oh, yeah. All right. So we're going to add this large egg white. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. Just move the glass. Double strain into the glass. Return to shaker. Yeah, we add it in. We just add it straight in. Straight in. Yeah. Shake until frothy. Here we go. Right. More shaking. More shaking. More shaking. Another minute long shake. They said Rick, shake it with frothy. How will we know it's frothy? It's inside. Oh, it's inside. I know. I'm just gonna shake this this feel left out. I like your shaking in solidarity. <laughs> um so I was trying to find the t-shirt that uh you wore in that final scene that Pull from you yeah. at the end of the show. If I can't find it, so I just pull my RBG. Oh, that's yeah. always solid. All right, are we doing this? I'm freezing my glasses. So. Oh, extra layer of cool. No, just you know, <laughs> crazy. All right, I think do you think we're shaking enough? Let me see yours. Are you going for it? Yeah, I think so. Ready? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess I should do it in camera. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. That's smart. Okay. Okay. I feel like I don't have the froth. Oh, wait. No, I think it's maybe settle it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Oh, Mudge, yours looks almost exactly like the Oh, you know what? It's going to settle. I see. It's going to settle like, wow. Like a science, science experiment? Science. See how it's like settling into getting the little. All right. And then we put a little half of a pecan on top. Yeah. In there, but I have no froth. So you hit so the egg. I should have. We should have just done the egg white. But it is, it is really tasty. Yeah. Look. Oh, I got the little. Look at that. Oh wait, hold on. I need the garnish. Just a sec. <laughs> I know, right? You really want to. Great tree, by the way, Kelly G. Oh, thank you. It's a good one this year. You know, they're not all as good every year. This right. <laughs> we we got it from a local black-owned business. Very nice. And there were four other families from our co-op in the same line as us. So oh, nice. excellent. All right. Here oh, we go. the drink is frothing up. I it's it this is a this is a, a grower. This drink. Um, so um I'm gonna have to say that. <laughs> All right, when do we get to drink it, Joan? 
I think we can drink whatever we want. Look at how pretty it is. It is very pretty. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. We are. Carolyn, thank you for finishing this and making it work. It's just we didn't do the egg. That's why it's not frothing. Oh, yeah. That's oh, nice. That's, that's so Christmassy. Really nice. This is really oh, Christmassy. Thank you, Joseph. Here's to Joseph. Here's Joseph. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. So, how is everybody? It's delicious. <laughs> Better now, Kelly. Better now. I'm going to go to the drink delivery. I'll be right back. Cheers. Oh, hi, Carolyn. Oh, this is this is excellent. Mm. Very nice. Good choice. Um, so you guys, I want to hear like all of the funny backstage stories from of good stock because okay. like I don't uh, I don't get to be there for that part. I just I, I just I think, fantastic, and then you guys go have fun without me. <laughs> no, I think it was one of the most. Like just delicious groups of people. Um, everybody was lovely. Everyone got along so incredibly well. We have pictures of us like falling asleep between shows, like basically lying on each other. Like like a puddle of kittens. Like a puddle of kittens. It was just all very G-rated for those of you at home. All very G-rated. Yes, but um, I actually tried to find some. Um, oh, if I can find them again, but it was just it was great. It was great. I'll t I will tell you that. Um, Jenny, before can I tell what our little ritual was before our entrance to that one scene? Oh God, what what did we do? Tell well, it. the top of the show, you came on before me, and I came on right afterwards. But we were in the same spot before you entered. Uh, and Jenny, like literally, as the music was winding down, she turned to me and be like, "I farted," and then she oh go. Oh my God! I can't believe you're telling that. I, I, I just asked you. I literally was like, "Is this happening?" Right now, it is. I'm not telling the world whether or not that, that you were. I mean, maybe it was just you being evil. <laughs> or either way, I suppose. I'm sure it was both. I'm sure it was both. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's like, uh, uh, you know, the actor prepares right there. That's, <laughs> <what I'm saying. laughs> that's the next level shit. Can you swear on this? You guys, this drink is really good. Yeah. This Do you like it? Mm-hmm. Very good. I'm also really happy that I have this much of this left. I know. Well, I was like, when when the recipe called for all the nuts, I was like, this is a lot of nuts for a drink. I hope it's not just one drink, because two, <laughs> two cups of nuts is a lot. To two cups of sugar, too. That's my treat. I one mean, cup of sugar. Yeah. What? One cup of sugar. It said two cups. Oh, maybe I made half. You're right. I made only half. Uh, Oh, I have one and a half. I have one and a half cups of sugar, I think. Okay. And well, one and a third cup of water. It doesn't matter. I wanted to. I wanted to respect Joseph and, um, <laughs> and, and do his recipe the way he wrote it. But you know, you guys do you. That's fine. Um, how is it? How is? Are given the deepest secret? Oh, well, look at your Christmas tree. No, yeah, I'm a tree. I like that uh, you have so many different locations. You have like a whole set, like movie. Yeah, that's it. I set up. I set up the kitchen area and then the the Christmas tree area. I mean, that's that's what you have when you live in Manhattan. You have so much room. <laughs> <laughs> set up sets. You guys, I will say, I, I don't know Kelly how much um, uh, Kelly O'Coin, how many exact. I know you've been doing self tapes, but all of the wonderful ways that theaters are coping with making material and finding, you know, ways to still uh, put, make content for their subscribers and stuff. All of that has been really funny to participate in, in a one bedroom apartment I have found. Cause they're like, here, we're going to shoot you a green screen, three poles and four lights and a mic. And you're like, <laughs> we're going to store it. And then what am I going to do with it when I'm not like, like when you're still shooting the thing. So our apartment is like a kind of a studio slash you know, sound studio slash living space. Right. Slash set. And you have literally have turned a closet into a sound studio for we recording. Did. We turned a closet. Yeah, we turned an IKEA wardrobe into a a recording booth. It's kind of it is amazing that you mm -hmm. guys uh, I have no ingenuity. I have I'm not I'm the least handy person you're ever going to meet in your life. Um, so it, I have a hard time even figuring out what background is going to be good for, for self-taping. 
Um, I, and I used to just come over to your place to do self tapes yeah. uh, and then we'd, we'd have drinks, but it's a little harder with the, with the COVID. I know. I know. I miss, I, I, you know, look, I, honestly, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm warm and safe and have my husband and my cats and I'm grateful the few people I've gotten to see. We did get to see you, Kelly and Carolyn. I, I also, I also feel like if I'm going to be super honest, like there's something about the like slowing down of everything. The reason sucks, but it has been, you know, we have to meet the time where it's at, right? And and the idea of just not even for any purpose having to race around the city or to run to this thing or run to that thing and then go see a show at the end of the night and see everybody, which I love and I can't wait to see everybody again. But like this kind of enforced, like, like uh, you live in Manhattan and nothing is happening, which even, you know, even 9-11 wasn't like that. Things were still bustling back and... Uh, you know, so I don't have a comparable situation of of what that is, but I don't know. I found it kind of um, because we have no choice but to be in it, right? I mean, as actors in the moment, so there's no like choice. But it has it's been informative to me to just kind of be like, okay, you're staring at the wall again, yay! And you have coffee and food, so you're fine. So what is the, how, how do you make work? How do you connect still? How do you find um, the things that matter to you? And that has been actually a huge revelation. I don't know. Me. It's interesting. I think you're right. I mean, I've never been a generator of work, um, for better or for worse. Um, I, I have not been, partic I haven't been particularly interested in doing it. Um, I like interpreting things that other people write and other people create. I love being highly collaborative. Yeah. I love building, but I like to be part of an ensemble that's <clears throat> that's creating, but with a with a guiding voice or two, the writer, uh, director. Um, and so this has been really challenging for me. I think the people who are handling it better professionally um, are people who were predisposed to do that anyway. Um, yeah. I, and this so weird, but when I started doing these IG lives uh, interviews, it changed things for me. It, it was like, it's not actually creative, but it kind of started to fill that void, mm -hmm. that approximated creativity, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something, and it feels like it's got my wheels turning again. And, um, yeah. Do you and feel, do you feel as an actor doing, doing that kind of thing? Do you feel that it has given you like more of a sense of empowerment, like choosing how you're spending your time or? Yeah. It feels like it's giving me structure, which I need. Mm -hmm. I'm terrible. I mean, I, the first five months of this, uh, four months of this, whatever, I don't think I stood up, you know, except to go from the bed to the couch. <laughs> um, and so I just, I'm bad. Um, my wife is much better at doing it, but she was also very busy with Zooms. And, and um, so I, I had even more sort of leeway to do nothing. Um, but then starting to do the interviews, uh, I, from that I'm doing an interview show, which of all things with Dominique Wilkins, do you guys know him? He was a, he was a NBA, he's an NBA legend. He's sort of right oh. with Magic and Larry Bird. Oh, no, I don't know his work. What plays has he been in? I'm <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a basketball fanatic too. So here no. we are. That's, that came out of this, which is fun. Again, it's not acting, but it's still something fun and, and interesting. Um, and as lazy as I can be, I'm really curious about people. So I love the interview, the free flowing interview kind of, uh, uh format. Um, and then the 24 hour plays, honestly, I did a monologue with them and I just did their gala and that has really got me feeling despite this, it's, I know it's still theater on this, but that, and one play by a guy named Tarek Davis. If you don't know Tarek Davis, you should, he was in Freestyle Love Supreme. Uh, oh. he's on the Amber Muffin show. Um, he's great and he wrote this half hour zoom play for halloween uh, uh, oh that, yeah the one yeah You're yeah it was a zoom meeting that went horribly wrong because there was an uh, i won't give it away but there was like it's like a, an invasion of the body snatchers thing that starts to happen to us on the zoom meeting and it was really fun and that kind of got my juices flowing again i'm not creating the work but um but i do think that there that it's made me realize that i need to be a little less passive Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good lesson to maybe take. I don't, I don't know what that means yet, but I think it's at least a good start. 
I feel like I'm, I, are you, I'm excited to see what, um, how this level of accessibility will continue even after, you know, hopefully the vaccine comes and hopefully we're all, you know, able to run to the theater immediately and be together and um, have audiences. But I also am really excited about uh, how theaters, like, like Kelly, what are the plans for MTC in terms of like, of, of continuing like digital content or uh, streaming stuff? Like, will that be roped in more? You know, I don't, I'm not sure that we've looked too much farther than the next couple of months about that. But, you know, in passing, we had a meeting the other day and like the same question was asked, you know, what in what way, um, you know, now that all people are comfortable and familiar with using all of these technologies, is there going to be, you know, a way to keep serving people who enjoy this kind of content um, and who enjoy theater? Uh, you know, it's a, it, it's like everything else with this. It's like, we have been forced to adapt to this yeah. and it's not all bad. You know, yeah. there are some yeah. about it that are um, unique and special to itself. So I, I'm, I'm interested in the answer to that question too. Right. Yeah, like I, I, I've enjoyed, I, I did the early, the first two productions with Moliere in the park, you know, they were supposed to open um, this summer, free theater in Prospect Park, and it was all set to go. And then of course, March hit and they kind of re, they were just like, what, you know, how should we reconfigure? And their artistic director, Lucy Tabergian, did some kind of, I mean, I was like, I don't know how this works. Why do people want to watch Moliere in boxes? Lucy, I don't know. I mean, I was really like, I mean, I was also panicky and anxious, you know, all the things too. I was like, why do we want to do Moliere on a screen? And and it ended up being like, you know, they ended up- You needed to channel your, uh, your uh, Catherine Hepburn to do it. <laughs> <laughs> why are we doing Moliere on boxes? Why? why are we doing Moliere? And uh, it ended up being like a great kickoff, you know, for this free theater company because they were gonna, it was gonna be free anyway. And and then it just made it free for all the thousands of, you know, many more people that would never have made it to Brooklyn in a park in the exact month. And, um, you know, and, and obviously it has an international appeal as well. So I don't know, that was really eye opening to me, like how many um, people would love theater if it were closer to them, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. you know, like everybody isn't a desperate child before the internet was wild, widely used and just wanted to be in New York City and love theater, right? So, so the people who might be more mild um, lovers of theater who think that it's not for them or that it's something that's a pain in the ass to go to or pay for, you know, all those things that it can be. I think the level of accessibility um, and a financial sense and a physical sense and a geographic sense is just, I think it's, I think it's kind of exciting. I think it's true, right? It's like for, for all of the things that are removed, also some of the things that are removed are the barriers to entry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a democratization um, or at least the potential for it. Uh, yeah. Well, there certainly is now, but there's a potential for it to, um, to last. And I wonder if there are things that, unexpected benefits that uh, theaters might have discovered. Um, you know, I, and it, it, the first thing I thought was, I was about to ask you, and I realized probably why this can't happen, but uh, I was wondering if there was any talk about releasing for limited times, like a week at a time, archived footage of the shows, but those are owned by Lincoln Center and, they, and they're and they not supposed to be used for, that, that, that would not work, right? Well, you know, there are all kinds of reasons why that can't happen. I think a lot of people talked about that early on, yeah. but you know, the fact is that the intellectual property is owned by so many different people mm -hmm. uh, on recordings like that, that, uh, you know, you have to go, you would have to go back and renegotiate right. everyone to make it viable. Although, you know, I felt the same way. I was like, what a great time to go back and see things I didn't get to see, even though it's not the same. Um, what did you guys, what would you guys want to watch in the last well, I just, before I, I just want, in case anyone watching has never seen any of the Lincoln Center archive uh, plays, they really do a great job. They do it, and it's just a general wide shot, and then they do the three different sort of close-ups. And for some reason, maybe because they're not trying to trying to do too much, almost everything I've seen has been great. Huh. It's really, it really is fair. It, it's it's as representational as I could possibly imagine a video to be without it being a, a reimagined production. 
but anyway, so that would be really cool for more people to be able to see that if it's possible. What well, what would you guys want to see? What would what did you miss that you would be like if you could see any show in the last Murder Ballad? What? I'd want to see Murder Ballad. You're kidding. <laughs> Oh. I uh, yeah, and Will Swenson was in it. And I love that guy. So, uh, did you see the thing that we put up a couple of weeks ago? The like watch party thing. Oh, I don't no. know. It's still running. Yeah, it was. Um, it was Trip and Justin Levine and Rebecca Naomi Jones like watching B roll of it, <gasps> commenting on it. So you could only see them. You couldn't see the. No, you could see the B roll, mm -hmm. and then like when they had something to say, they sort of popped up. It was one of the things wow. that MPC has done virtually. I'm not actually sure if it's still up or not. I should know that, but um, worth yeah. looking at our website to see if it's there because it was a ton of fun. That would be mm -hmm. it was a ton of fun, and there's a lot of B roll for it. It is still on YouTube. I'm being told by my colleagues. Still, oh, oh my god! Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, by the way, go. That's the of, of good stock. Oh my god! Look at that group. Tell me that's not an adorable group. That's so. That is like definitely backstage. Yeah. Oh man, it really uh, was like the best group of people. It was a lovely group of humans, and I mean, it was such a great play. It was so fun. It was such like a fam. You know, it was so about family, and I think we all just decided that we were just gonna have so much fun. That was the only option. This was right before our final performance. That was our final performance? Yep. Who took I mean, that? I can't remember who took that, but it was. Was it, we, Todd? We, was it our, our ASM Todd? He might have taken it. Oh, it might have been Todd. I yeah. It might have been Todd. Um, awesome. But it was, uh, we did that, a version of that before every show, which was nice, just sort of a check in. Um, and it's rare to have, uh, I don't know, I'm getting away from the question, but it is it is rare to have a group that is so tight and supportive and it, it I mean it, it's sort of an encapsulation of what got me interested in theater to begin with mm -hmm. uh, I love performing um, I was a ham but and I love the art of it of course I grew to love the art of it that wasn't the impetus at first it was the community and it was a community of people who were unabashedly lovely and into um, tactile tangible love you know I mean I, I made that sound weird but that, that were affectionate and not afraid, male or female, to show that. Um, and um, the building of little families. Uh, it was it was something, it was huge. That was absolutely the, the, the that's why I love tech. Yeah. Well, and Lynn was so, Lynn was so patient with us. And so oh, everyone would be like, Lynn, like we always needed a she lot of time. time. Yeah. Remember, she was like, no one can make any noise for this hour because they need their naps. And we were like, <laughs> I, I feel so infantilized now, but I love it. Because it was, it was Mama so Meadow sweet. just told it just like basically gave us a lot of you to come to sleep. So sweet. And Nate making her laugh at notes and her being like, it was, it was a very, it was a very loving and, um, you know, the intense themes of the show, family and, and illness and death and, you know, all those things. But um, that was <laughs> to deal with all those things was very, uh, it was a, such a nice group. It was so safe. It was very yeah. safe. Yeah, it was. Well, and it showed in the performance. I mean, you know, the thing that sucks about being an actor is you can never see your own show, but like it really no, did. No more. <laughs> it really did come through that you all, all loved each other. Well, I remember maybe two years before, Mudge, you and I were involved in a reading of that play. It was unfinished. Yeah, she did like yeah. the first, I think the first reading that she Melissa did. Ross first reading and she didn't, uh, and it was at the old Bank Street Theater in a space. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who produced it, uh, who, produced, yeah. who was going to the reading yeah. workshop. Directed it, yeah. And I remember you were in it and I was in it and a number of wonderful actors. Yeah, uh, great. And, but, when it came back around, it wasn't until I didn't even recognize the as for the audition for the for the MTC production, I didn't even recognize the title. It had been so long. But yeah, it was. It was, it was, long. Video, it was yeah. like this rings up, Val. And then you and I talked. I think the same day because I think we got the auditions on the same day. Yeah. But, that's um, so funny. Oh, I did. I did not know that you guys. I didn't know that you had been involved with it. We had before or whatever. <laughs> We did a we did like the first she just wanted to hear things aloud and she's mm -hmm. like, I think that you know, these people and and Kelly and I have been friends for 
I don't even know how long anymore because people kept telling us about each other before we met. They were like, you guys are gonna get along really well. And so we kind of felt like we had this date with destiny of actually doing a full show. We did workshops, we did readings, we did- hundred readings. I played, I played your husband in so many you know, 20 readings. Yeah. yeah. So I felt kind of bad. I knew that like some people were like, they really seem like they're married and they have such a, and it's like, oh, we're totally cheating. We've known it. And I felt like, yes, we are just, we just created this. And it, you know, there isn't, right? Like acting is imagination and fakeness and to feel realness. But some of it is just fucking real. Like some of it is just shorthand, right? Like you work with someone you love and. But don't you find sometimes that uh, familiarity actually can sometimes hinder um, chemistry? Well, I think because we were playing people who were supposed to be married for a long time and have a, you know, we weren't like meeting. If we had right. people that were meeting, it might have been like, I totally know you. Yeah. I don't know. No, no uh, Kelly, you, you didn't hear that. We could totally play anything. We could totally play people who hadn't met before. Oh my God, you guys know I just call you all the time for everything anyway. Don't worry about it. I love that. I, lo I feel like we should say like for, I mean, obviously anybody in the business knows and people who don't like how, And but I say, this is what I start my classes off with Kelly Gillespie. When I teach yeah. um, acting business classes, I'm always like your number one fans besides your mom and your number one, like the people that are going to be in your life, your business life, the longest are casting directors. And at that point, a lot of students are like, what is a casting director? You know what I mean? Because I didn't know. I didn't know what the casting director exactly did when I was 19. Like I knew the title and I knew the, it's like the casting director is the person I'm trying to see. Knock, knock, you know. Yeah. But it's like, it's such a, it's such an important relationship. And don't you feel like New York is so small, like in that way of, of like, you know, in a nice way, like it's our small little town and. Well, it's funny because like the thing that I tell young people when I teach them or do seminars and stuff is I talk about how small the business is. And I talk about I th I, that I think the reason is because, you know, you exactly like you were saying, Kelly, like people come together in these small groups in very, very intense, intimate settings for like three months. Mm -hmm. And those people become your family and your best friend. And then all those people go away and then they recombine in yeah. different formats later on. And so like it just accrues and everybody and everybody truly does know everybody. And if you don't know the person, you basically you know someone who knows them. Yeah, yeah. You're like yeah. a degree of separation away from them. So it's like, you know, and I tell them that by way of saying like, it's actually, it can be claustrophobic sometimes, but it's also extremely comforting because it truly is like, if you, if you are good and if people like you, they want to help you. And they know everybody you need to know. Like it really, it's so, it's so it's such a, my acting teacher used to talk about this. He's like, look, everything is handed down in this business and in this craft. We are not, we can be online and we can do all the things, but, but it's always going to be a business that the importance of like the relationship and the handing down, right? Like your mentors, Kelly and your mentors, Kelly and my mentors, you know what I mean? Like they were all the people that like, Gave mm -hmm. us knowledge and and love and encouragement. And they invited us in, and they invited us in, and they help us out. And then you like become the people that are the people mm -hmm. helping the young ones out. Yeah, and you really. Yeah, I have this. I have this elephant on my shelf. You can see it right here. When I did Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, it's an oh. elephant, not a cat. But when I did Cat on a Hot Tin Roof at the Geffen Playhouse in 2005, it was the first time I had worked in LA. It was the second time I've ever even been in LA. I literally just went there to, to do this show and Gil Cates was directing it, who was running, you know, Geffen Playhouse and had produced the Oscars and, you know, did a ton of stuff. And he was already, you know, then in his seventies, I think early seventies and he gave me this elephant because Julie Harris gave it to him. And when they were shooting something and he was like, I, she gave it to me when I was young and she was like, I passed and it came from, a mentor of hers and he's like she told me i couldn't give it to someone until i was like i felt like they would you know know the thing and then pass it down so i have to you know uh, open down when the time is right but i love it i said i mean i'm it's always with me and it's just who, like, did you say, who did you say gave it to him so julie halston julie harris julie harris oh okay yeah wow. you know her no. i don't know her but i feel like there's a piece of her in my house and I'm gonna, I'll tell her that, you know, we'll know. Yeah. You know, Kelly, what you were just saying about um, uh, 
just going in and doing your work. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm extrapolating a little bit, but essentially what I was getting from what you're saying is, you know, when you, especially when you're starting out, going and doing your work, being professional, being prepared, being, um, I'm not charming, but being um, uh, a human to, to the casting directors you're in the room with does go a long way. And it's the kind of thing that keeps you getting called back to, for other things. And I remember early on, my, my first managers were saying, I, I didn't get many callbacks for shows and I didn't book many gigs, but I kept getting called back for other things by the casting directors. And she said to me, like the <clears throat> main manager at the time, she said to me, um, that's as good as a callback. Um, and that's why we're signing you because I was freelancing for a few months. And she's yeah. like, they like you. And um, obviously the, the feedback is good. You seem like, it. And they're like, oh, this is a new person and he's professional. And you know, Kelly, I mean, in one of your former uh, jobs, you were one of those people. Um, oh, they got you the manager? Because you were like, you mean- No, no, oh. no you just, I'm sorry, but she was a casting director, uh, but you were working with Stephen Clapper at the time, mm -hmm. back, yeah. way back in the day. And that was like one of the first, you guys were two of the first people that kept calling me back for things, um, which did many things. It got me signed by my manager, it got me, eventually got me a job, but it also gave me confidence when, at a point when I was like, I I don't know, I'm not booking anything, but you guys kept telling me um, just by bringing me in. So anyway, uh, that that was a huge, that was a huge thing. So yeah. we've known each other for a minute too. Yeah, definitely. I've known both of you for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> well, we are at a certain point in our yeah. world journeys but it, it's also like no careers I, well, I, I, I love that I think that that is one of the that's the thing that drew me like uh, like yeah being on stage I, I really just like I, I realized that I like rehearsal I mean performance is great but I realized I enjoyed the process as much as the product as I like became a professional and I was like oh I don't want people to leave I don't want the director to go away I mean that's always a good sign when you don't want them to go away right you're like I don't want you to leave I want you to always come in and be in our rehearsal and I want like I don't know it is the community that is uh yeah. I don't know I'm not feeling that way for this Christmas I really honestly feel that way it no it's really true and I think the thing that I have actually noticed in the last six months and we do probably have to wrap up soon and do oh. it. Cheers. But I do think um, I have felt that the community is still very much there, which, mm -hmm. um, you know, even though there are no plays in the traditional sense right now, the community still exists. And I think that that is pretty awesome. It's going to be insane. It when is going to be insane. I think, into, it's going to be crazy. I think you're right, too, because you look at things like Moliere in the Park, which was such a huge, both, both the first two productions, and I think the third one, too, huge hits. Um, the 24-hour plays, everybody wants to do them, and everybody's, you know. It, it, I mean, the New York Times has to write about digital. Yeah, they're, yeah. Like, <laughs> they're like, we don't have, which is, it's, it's like pretty. Right, hard. and they're growing, too. And, um, you know, in the Richard Nelson plays, the Apple plays, where yeah. it was for Zoom, and so it, it, it actually fit perfectly uh, for that for that particular storyline. Um, but, yeah, I I mean, I think there's a, I think there's a world in which like radio drama can make a comeback too, oh, which gosh. is something I really want to do. And I, I want to talk to both of you about this before. Uh, well, before I know a guy. She knows a guy. <laughs> I know a guy who knows a guy. I know a guy. Um, all right, you guys, I think the next time we do this, and that can be online when we do it, but we should do it on uh, Jenny's balcony. I agree. Yeah, it's we should stream on your balcony. To live together on the balcony. And in the meantime, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And happy holidays to everyone out there. Who's Stay watching. safe, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.